Good morning, boys and girls. I'm so excited to be with you this morning. We have a very fun video planned, um, reviewing some questions, reviewing our year, and looking forward to the summer. Okay, so now I have a couple quick announcements before we dive in. All right, boys and girls, so this is our last Sunday of our normal school year programming, which means at the end of the year, we've always done a review of some sorts. Normally it has, we have some donuts, we say goodbye to our fourth graders, and we have a big review game. Well, today is a little bit different in that we're not all together still. So we're gonna do some review questions and you get to participate at home by answering those questions on our website. Okay, looking forward to summer, like a couple announcements about that. So normally when we have our summer programming, we kind of have um, some fun games. We get to enjoy everybody in kids court. It's just our rising first through third grade and we have a good time well this summer looks a little bit differently we are going to continue to do these videos each week um, through the summer so what i want you to think about is ways that you might can participate whether that's helping with 66 book song maybe recording yourself doing a home video of the scripture memory um, that way you can participate in the worship and we might actually be able to add you into our video for Sunday morning. So I'll be in touch about that and ways that you can help and be a part of our Sunday morning videos. Now for today, a couple of quick ways to, to, to frame our time this morning. We are going to review some questions and just talk through our lessons from the past year. Now, if you go on our website, pcpc.org slash kids, you can find a review quiz that goes along with these questions and you can participate and answer these questions at home. So what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video and I want you to go to the website and pull up that quiz. All right, great. So we've got, everybody's got their quizzes ready to go and we are gonna dive in to some questions. Now, I want you to think about the entire year that we have learned. We've learned about the Old Testament, right? We've been learning about everything from the very, very beginning all the way up to Judges and Ruth. So we're not all the way through the Old Testament, but we've got a good part of the history of Israel. So let's get started with our review game. So question number one, we've been doing this a lot throughout the year. How many themes of the Bible do we learn about? Option one, 12. Option two, 16. Option three, eight. Or option four, three. Take a second, think about that. Select your answer and the answer is 16. We've got 16 themes. Let's do this real quick. Creation, fall, flood, patriarchs, bondage, wandering, conquest, cycles, kings, split, Exile, return, silence, Christ, church, second coming. So we got 16 themes. And who can tell their parents why we have 16 themes? Why we have 16 themes? Take a second just to tell your parents about the 16 themes, about why we have them. Why do we use them? What do they help us do? What do they help us do with the story of the Bible? Yeah, they help us to connect all of the different stories from the very beginning. And they help us to understand what's happening. When we read a story in the Old Testament or we read a story in the New Testament, we can figure out what's going on in a big picture. If we zoomed all the way out, what would we see in the Bible? Question number two. God created two people in the garden. What were their names? Option one, John and Carol. Option two, Adam and Eve. Option three, Bill and Wanda. Or option four, James and Sally. All right, lock in your answers. And that is Adam and Eve. Yes, we learned about Adam and Eve being the first humans God created in the garden. He first created Adam, and then Adam was lonely. He had all these animals around him, and he said, oh, I don't have a helper. I don't have somebody that looks like me. And so God created Eve to be a companion to Adam. All right, question number three. What animal tempted Eve? It's talking about the fall of Adam and Eve. There was an animal that tempted Eve. We've got A, option one, sloth. 
option two, tiger, option three, snake, or option four, a whale? All right, lock in your answers, and it is snake. It was a serpent, it was a snake. Yes, Satan tempted Adam and Eve in the garden. And a snake came and started talking and said, hey, did God really tell you not to eat? Did God really say? And he began to, to, to question God. And he had them thinking, huh, maybe I shouldn't trust in what God has told me. And that's the very first thing that Adam and Eve were tempted by, was whether or not they should believe and trust in God. All right, question number four. Which brother dressed up with fur in order to look like his older brother and then lied to his father so that he could receive their father's blessing. All right, so we're fast forwarding a little bit. We're beyond the garden. We're talking about two brothers here, and one of the brothers lied to his father to get the blessing. Does this story sound familiar? It should. The answer is Jacob. Now remember, Jacob had a brother Esau, and Jacob was a younger brother. But God had told them that Jacob would actually be the leader of Israel. He would be the descendant. He would be the one who would receive the blessing, and that Esau would serve the younger brother, which was not how it was supposed to happen. And so Jacob lied and stole his brother's birthright. All right, question number five. Who did God give the job of building a massive boat called an ark? Okay, now this is a very, very big story. Fill in your answer here. This is a blank question, so fill in your answer here. And the answer is Noah. Noah was called by God to build an ark because he was going to flood the world. There had been a lot of sin that had entered the world. The entire world was disobeying God. Only Noah and his family were found to be righteous and worshiping. And God said, I'm going to save Noah, and I'm going to save the animals, and I'm going to start over. I'm going to create a new world, but I'm going to start with Noah. All right, next question. These two brothers in the Old Testament are twins. Ooh, we're looking at some family dynamics in the Old Testament. We're seeing which ones are twins. First option is Cain and Abel. Second option is Jacob and Esau. Third option is Joseph and Levi. Fourth is Aaron and Moses. All right, lock in your answers. The answer is Jacob and Esau. They were twins. All right, next question. Where was Moses born? Now you remember Moses, He we first get introduced to Moses. Um, he is a baby born and his mother puts him in a basket and puts him on a river and I don't want to give any of the answers away yet but he was born in either Texas, Canaan, Egypt, or Israel. Okay lock in those answers. The answer is Egypt. Moses was born in Egypt. He and his family were born there and this was after the time of Joseph, but Moses was born in Egypt. And at the time, Pharaoh had forgotten about their relationship with Joseph and how Joseph had helped with the famine and was the Pharaoh's advisor. And all of that had been forgotten. It had been hundreds of years. And so uh, the Pharaoh at the time was looking out and seeing that the Israelites had grown and multiplied and they were taking over things. And so they said, you know what? We're going to make it really hard to be an Israelite in Egypt. And he was an evil man. And he said, you know what? I don't want there to be any young men in, in Israel. Because I don't want them to be soldiers someday. Because if there are, they'll overtake us. And so he said, he made a law. He said, any Egyptian or any Israeli or Israelite baby who's a boy needs to be killed. So he can't grow up to be a soldier one day. Well, Moses' mom hid him and put him in a basket and put him on the river in the Nile. And God took over the story. But that is how Moses enters into Egypt and our story in the Bible. Okay, next question. What word means promise in the Bible? 
Now, this is a word that we've talked about through the entire year, that God keeps his promises. God creates these. He has these promises with his people. We've seen a few of them throughout our stories already. But there is a word, and I'll give you a hint before you write this down in your, in your quiz. There is a school that has the same name that some of you might even attend. Now, I think that gave, gives you a pretty big hint. But the word, the word that means promise is covenant. Covenant, yes, that is a promise or an agreement that two people make. And in this story, in our stories in the Bible, it's often between God and his people. God makes a covenant, a promise with his people. Now, we're going to see one in another question here soon. All right, next question. We're on to question number nine. Name the patriarchs. Okay, so we've got creation, fall, flood, patriarchs. What are, who are three Patriarchs. Okay, so on this list, you can select all three, up to as many as you think. I'm going to give you a hint that there's only three. So pick your three patriarchs. All right, the answer is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They are the three men that started, that are the beginning of Israel, and they are the patriarchs of Israel. Okay, question number 10. What is the first book of the Bible? Easy one. Go ahead and fill this in. Genesis. You guys have gotten this. All right. Who was given the Ten Commandments on top of a mountain? This one's a little bit tricky. Or is it? But this one, go ahead and fill this answer in. We've already talked about this person. He was born in Egypt. And his name is Moses. All right. Moving on to the next one. What body of water did the Israelites cross to flee from Pharaoh? Now, the Israelites, give you a little backstory. The Israelites had been enslaved, right? And they were working hard. They had been um, forced to do labor. And, and Pharaoh had just made it harder and harder. And God had heard the cries, the, the prayers of the Israelites. And remember that he... And, he, and he, was, he was told to remember how he was supposed to rescue them. And he had promised them that he would bring them to the promised land. A land that would be uh, rich with uh, milk and honey and would have everything that they needed. But they were enslaved. And so God lifted up and, and built up Moses to be their leader. And when they were fleeing, they crossed over a body of water. The options are the Red Sea, the Nile, the Mississippi River, and the Dead Sea. Four options there. Do you remember which body of water that Moses and the Israelites crossed? The answer is the Red Sea. Yes, Moses and the Israelites crossed the Red Sea. Okay, God sent Noah which symbol that he would never flood the earth again. Okay. At the end of our story of Noah on the ark, God says he's never going to flood the earth again. That he is going to create a promise, a covenant even, with humanity, with all of the world. That he's never going to destroy the world again. What was the symbol that when we see it, we can remember that God has made this promise? Was it a dove? Was it a rainbow? Was it sunshine? Or was it a crow? Write it in your answers. The answer is rainbow. God gave us the rainbow to remember that when we see that, God is remembering his promise that he will never flood the world again. All right, question number 14. How many books are in the Bible? We've even learned a song about it. We've got the Old Testament song. We've got the New Testament song. You might even be able to sing that a little bit later on the YouTube video. How many books in the Bible? All right, we've got 33, we've got 66, we've got 44, and we've got 55 as your options. Go ahead and select an answer. And the answer is 66. We've got 66 books of the Bible. Okay, what did God create on the very first day of creation? What did he say? The very first day of creation. All right. 
But on the answer there, God said, let there be light. He created light. Now, boys and girls, this is what I love about the story of creation, is it shows us how powerful God's voice is, how powerful his word is. And we get his word through our Bible. And we can read that every single day. We can hear about who God is. We can hear from him through his word. But I love the story of creation because it shows us that God has a powerful voice. All he has to do to create everything is to just say it. He says, let there be light. And there's light. And it's good. All right, next question, boys and girls. How many days did it rain on Noah during the flood? Okay, so do you remember the flood? We talked about it a little bit, but it rained a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. How many days did it rain? Go ahead and fill in that answer. A couple more seconds. The answer is 40. It rained 40 days and nights nonstop, just lots of rain. Okay, next question. Question number 17. What is the name of Samson's wife? Who is Samson's wife? We talked about this just a couple weeks ago. Who did Samson marry? Remember, Samson is one of our judges. The judges are not like the judge that sits and bangs a gavel and listens to court cases. The judges were called by God to lead the nation of Israel during their season in um, the Promised Land. Who was Samson's wife? We've got Jezebel, we've got Ruth, we've got Hagar, and we've got Delilah. Those four options. Do you remember who was Samson's wife? Go ahead and lock in your answer. All right, the answer is Delilah. Delilah, that is who Samson married. Remember, she was a Philistine. He was told not to marry her. All right, next question, question number 18. How many sons did Jacob have? Jacob had quite a few children. We know that. Um, he was the father of Israel. He actually became, his name was changed to Israel. And so that's where we get our tribes. And so that might help you in this short answer. There were 12 sons. There were 12 tribes of Israel, 12 sons that Jacob had. All right, question number 19. What land did God give to the Israelites? Where was God leading the Israelites when they were wandering in the desert? They, were, they had a destination, an end to their trip. Where was God taking them? We've got A, Texas. Two, we've got Egypt. Three, we've got Eden. Lastly, we've got the promised land. Which option should you choose? The answer there, once you've locked in your answer, is the promised land. God was leading them to the promised land. He had said, this is going to be a land that I'm going to give to you. I'm going to make this your inheritance. It's going to be a land that is overflowing with milk and honey. I'm going to take care of you in this land. And it's the promised land. All right, next question. This is our last one. Who was in charge of leading the Israelites after Moses died? Okay, remember this, Moses had not been allowed to enter the promised land. He had disobeyed God and he had gotten angry and he had um, grumbled against God and the people of Israel. And so God punished him. God said, I'm not going to allow you to see the promised land. You are a faithful servant. I love you, but this is your consequence for disobeying. You're not going to be able to enter into the promised land. So who ended up leading the Israelites into the promised land? and leading them in con conquering some of the neighboring nations? Answer is Joshua. Joshua ends up being their next leader. He leads them to the Battle of Jericho. He leads them as a nation um, right up until we have the Book of Judges. All right, boys and girls, that is our review quiz, our review game. Um, what I want you to do is if, if I want you to submit your answers, um, I hope that you didn't change them as I was answering them, but I want you to submit your answers on that quiz. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select, if you answer those correctly and if you've submitted them, I'm going to select some lucky winners to participate in a pie in the face challenge. So, um, someday soon, I'm going to come to your house and you're going to get to pie me in the face. But you have to submit your quiz. You have to submit your answers. Um, and it'll be fun. We'll get it recorded. And yeah, I hope you do that. 
All right, boys and girls, well, I'm so thankful for you. I'm so thankful that you participated in this. I cannot wait to see you again in person. Um, I am praying for that day to come soon. But in the meantime, know that I miss you, that I love you, that I cannot wait to see you again soon. And I hope that you have a great start to your summer. Bye, boys and girls. Thank you.